Hello, this is Miss Moore, and today during chemistry, we're going to discuss heat, energy, and work. Today's essential question, what is the relationship between heat, temperature, and energy? We'll start with energy. So energy is the capacity to do work or produce heat. Potential energy is energy due to composition, meaning makeup, or position like where it is relative to something else. So you can think of potential energy as stored energy or energy ready to use. Kinetic energy is energy due to motion. And kinetic energy depends on the mass and velocity. And velocity is speed in a particular direction. So kinetic energy depends on the mass and the velocity of an object. And um, here it is in a mathematical representation. Kinetic energy equals one half of m, which is mass, times velocity squared. So looking at this mathematical relationship, we can see that if something has either a greater mass or a greater velocity, or I guess both, um, there will, that object will have a greater kinetic energy. And our last energy comment for now is the law of conservation of energy. So energy can be converted from one form to another, but it cannot be created or destroyed. So the amount of energy you start with is how much you end with. Um, now the energy could change, right? It could, be, it could change from, to thermal energy, potential energy, kinetic energy. But if you sum all of that energy together, you're going to end up with the same amount of energy you started with. All right, quick overview of heat. Heat is the transfer of energy between two objects due to a temperature difference. Okay, heat is not actually matter. It's the transfer of energy. And the transfer of energy is due to a temperature difference. So if you put two objects near each other or touching each other, heat energy will transfer from the warmer object, the one with more kinetic energy, to the cooler object, the one with less kinetic energy. So in chemistry, heat is symbolized by a Q and has the units joules, sometimes kilojoules. Okay. Heat, when heat leaves the system in an exothermic reaction, it's leaving our system the Q is going to be negative. Conversely, if heat enters the system during an endothermic reaction, we're going to end up with a positive Q. And that should conceptually make sense, right? If we're remember when we're talking about system and surround, when we're focused on the system, when we're looking at the, at the heat, um, as heat leaves, obviously we're going to be subtracting it out. And as it heat enters, we're going to be adding it back in. Now, if we were, well, I, I, won't, I don't want to confuse you. We'll stop with that. Okay, on to work. So work is the result, the result of a force acting through a distance. And work is symbolized with a lowercase w and uses the units joules or kilojoules. Work is related to both pressure and volume. And this is an equation you're gonna to wanna to know because it is not on your AP chemistry handout. And that is W equals negative P delta V or work equals negative pressure times the change in volume. You will also wanna be familiar with this unit conversion which is one liter ATM equals 101.3 joules. Why do you need to know that? Well, I just told you that the unit for work is joules. However, when we multiply pressure and volume, we end up with the units liter ATM. If we want the work in joules, we'll have to do this unit conversion there. All right, on to the last topic, energy, heat, and work. So we'll start with internal energy, which is represented by capital E. 
So internal energy of a system is the sum of all of the energies of that system. Okay. And we can calculate the change in the internal energy of a system using the equation delta E for change in energy equals energy final minus energy initial. Okay, think about this for a minute. I am, we can have a change in energy without creating or destroying energy, right? Because we're talking about the internal energy of the system, okay? So the energy in the system can change and the energy of the surround can change, but the total energy is going to stay the same, okay? So when we're talking about delta E here, we're talking about the energy of the system. Okay, so when a system loses energy, the, the change in energy is going to be negative, right? Now, keep in mind that the energy of the surround is now going to be positive, okay? When a system gains energy, the change in energy of the system, or the delta E, is going to be positive. Conversely, the change in the surround is going to be negative, because that's where the energy is coming from. Okay, internal energy is related to heat and work. So energy, heat, and work. How are they related? Well, we got a formula here. Delta E equals Q plus W. Or we could write that as internal energy equals heat plus work. Okay? So that's all the information we have. Oh, wait, 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 before I say that, you need to know this. All right, now let's try a practice problem. All right, um, let's do a energy, heat, and work practice problem. Here we go. In a refrigeration system, the refrigerant gas absorbs 21.39 kilojoules of energy while expanding against a 0.278 atmosphere pressure from a volume of 0 0.0423 liters to 1.876 liters. What is the energy change of the gas? All right, let's go through this and look at all the numbers and units and figure out what kind of information we got here. All right, so we first we have the refrigerant gas absorbs 21.39 kilojoules of energy. Well, what in the world is that? Well, that's going to be our Q. Why is it our Q? Well, remember the definition of heat. Heat is the transfer of energy. And here we've got something absorbing energy, which means it's our Q or our heat. So we have Q equals 21.39 kilojoules. All right, what other in information do they have here? Well, we've got 0.278 atmospheres of pressure. Well, it tells us directly what that is. So our pressure is 0 0.278 atmospheres. And what else do we have? We have two volumes, an initial volume and a final volume. So volume initial is 0 0.0423 liters, and our volume final is 1.876 liters, and it asks us for the energy change, which is our delta E, which is what we don't know. All right, let's jot down our two equations and see what we can do with from there. All right, so we know, since we're looking for delta E, we'll start with that. Delta E equals Q plus W, or heat plus work. Um, and it looks like we don't have enough information to solve that problem, right? Because we've got our Q and we, our delta E, but we don't know work. So work equals negative pressure times delta V. So it looks like the very first thing we need to do here is solve for work so that um, we can then solve for the change in energy. All right, so we have work equals negative our pressure, which is 0 0.278 
ATM times delta V. And remember, delta V is um, volume final minus volume initial, so I guess we should do that. Delta V equals volume final minus volume initial. Did I write that correctly? Yes. And that gives us a delta V of 1.8337. And we got to check our sig figs, or since we're doing subtraction, it's our number, number of decimal places. So we have three and four. So um, it looks like our delta V is going to be 1.834. 1.8. 1.834 liters. Okay, so 1.834 liters. Um, let's make a little space here. All right, so solving for W, we end up with 0 0.50987. Five two um, ATM liters and sig figs. We've got three and four, so three sig figs. So our W is going to be negative zero point five one zero ATM liters. All right, we're almost ready to solve for our energy change. The only problem we have now is that our Q is in kilojoules and our W is in ATM liters, so we need to convert. So let's do that real quick. We'll be using the equality one liter ATM equals 101.3 joules. All right, so we have our work is negative 0 0.510 liter ATM over 1. So we'll have 1 liter ATM on the bottom, so our units cancel out. And on the top, we have 101.3 joules. And that gives us um, 51.663 joules and sig figs will be three. So that gives us 51.6 joules. Um, still have a slight problem. We've got joules here, but kilojoules here. So we need to change one of them since we're working on the, um, work unit. I'll just go ahead and change this one. So to go from joules to kilojoules, move back three places. So our work is now, oh, forgot to carry my negative. There we go. My work is now 0 0.0516 kilojoules. Phew. Now we're finally ready to solve for delta E. All right. Finally, we can solve for delta E. So delta E equals Q, which in this case is 21.39 kilojoules, plus W, which is negative 0 0.0516 kilojoules, gives us... Um, 21.3384 kilojoules and digits after the decimal is two. So our delta E equals 21.39 kj. All right, that's it for today. Have a good one.